Yeah, are you out there? Yes, I've arrived and I've already started tracking the beast. Well, be careful, okay? Because this is not your average T-Rex. He's really smart. I'm talking really crafty. I've been hunting dangerous game since you were a wee little boy. So why don't you just be quiet and let me do my job? <clears throat> There's the beast now. He wasn't too hard to find. He seems to have some sort of prehistoric weapon. Well, you are no match for me, you prehistoric lizard. Ah! What's up everybody, my name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. We're back out of the range and before we get started, I wanna clear something up real quick. I am not an elephant hunter. I've never been on an elephant hunt. I don't have intentions on going on an elephant hunt and I'm not promoting the hunting of elephants. Just wanted to say that before somebody gets really upset about the title of this video. Today, we are just having some fun with a very ridiculous rifle and that's what I'm all about. I love ridiculous firearms and it doesn't get much more ridiculous than a firearm that was designed to take down something the size of a school bus. I have always wanted to try out a safari rifle and that's what we're going to do today. I finally have one. This is the CZ 550 Magnum. It doesn't look like anything special, right? It looks like your average bolt action rifle. I will say it does seem to be built a lot more rugged. Uh, the barrel is pretty heavy and pretty thick and it does have some weight to it, but what makes this firearm special is what it's chambered in. Look at how long that action is. That is a long action. This is chambered in 458 lot, and I'm sure you've never heard of that before. So let me see if I can get it out of my pocket and I will show it to you. Come on. Oh, there it is. All right, you ready? Look at that. That is ridiculous. 458 lot, that's a 500 grain brass solid round, and this is putting out almost 6,000 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. I'm gonna show you this compared to some other common hunting cartridges that I know you've heard of, and you're gonna see just how big this round is. This is a fairly light rifle, and it's made like that so that if you're packing this around all day, it's not gonna weigh you down. The downside is when you have a light rifle like this and you're packing such a big round in it, you're gonna have a lot of recoil and I'm really excited to see just how hard this thing kicks. I have not shot it yet. You're gonna be here with me for the first shots. And uh, real quick, I'm gonna show you this thing compared to some other rounds and then we're gonna get started. So here's some rifle rounds I know you've heard of. This is a 5.56, then you have 308, 30 out 6, 300 Winchester Magnum, 338 Lapua, 4570, and now here, is the 458 lot. You can see that it is a massive round. The case is longer than the 338 Lapua case and the bullet weighs more than double the 338 Lapua. So as usual, we're gonna start out with some steel targets. We're 25 yards back. I have on my eye protection and now I'm gonna be putting in my hearing protection. And while I do that, I wanna say thank you to Big Daddy Unlimited for sponsoring today's video. As you can imagine, a rifle like this is not very common and pretty hard to find. So a big thank you to them for making today's video possible. Be sure and show them some love. Now, I showed you the 500 grain brass solid, but that's not really what you wanna shoot at a steel target. So I have these. These are also 500 grains. These are made by Hornady, and I believe these are called DGX is what the bullet is called. That kicks really hard and it knocked over our steel target. Wow. Woo. Green target. Oh. Knocked it down. My shoulder, it's feeling this. I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating at all. This is kicking really hard. Round three, let's go for the uh, purple target. Oh. I love that it is knocking down the targets. That just shows you how much power 
this thing possesses. Red target. Oh, oh that one didn't fall over. Hit a little low. Should we go for the blue target for our last shot or should we hit the red target and knock it over? Mm, ah, let's just do both. I'm gonna knock over that red target then I'll just put one more in there and we'll shoot the blue target. You're going down, red target. Oh. <laughs> All right, let me grab one more round. Woo! And actually for this last shot, I didn't tell you this rifle has a set trigger. So it's ready to go, right? But you pull forward on this trigger, you hear that click? This thing now is a hair trigger. I barely have to touch it and it's gonna go off. Okay, blue target. Oh. And that trigger was so light. I normally don't pick up my brass, but this is a time when I think I am gonna pick up the brass because the stuff is not cheap. Whoa, oh my gosh. Jeez. That messed up these targets. That is one heck of a dent. This is rated for 50 BMG. And it put a pretty big crater in that. And these are lead rounds. It's not even the brass round. That one got jacked up pretty good too. And then our red target here. There was that first shot and it almost knocked it over still. And there's the second shot. That's the one that knocked it over. Tell you what, today is not the day to be a table at Kentucky Ballistics. <laughs> Good luck, little guy. I'm gonna go ahead and give our steel targets the rest of the day off. I think they've earned it. And we're gonna go ahead and shoot some stuff. We're gonna start out with a five gallon water jug. I really hope that this water does not come all the way back here and hit me. I'm not really concerned about me. I just don't wanna get my gun wet. Golly! That was impressive. It would have been cool if we could have caught that round, but I know there's no way in heck this one five gallon water jug's gonna catch it, but just absolutely annihilated it. Okay, next, let's do some cinder block. So I've got a regular cinder block and then I've got this cinder block, which is four inches thick. Okay, gonna load two in this time. I have the cinder blocks turned at a slight angle. I don't think it's gonna matter because this is just gonna blow right through it, but still, that's what I'd say. All right, we'll go with the one on the left first. Whoa! I don't think I've ever seen a cinder block break up like that before. Whew. This may be my new favorite gun. I don't know. Four inch block. Wow. Uh, yeah. Maybe my new favorite gun. I say, would you happen to know the time? Golly! I am not exaggerating when I say I have never seen watermelons evaporate like that. That is just crazy. 
I just wanted to take some time to sit here and think and wonder why you're not following me on Instagram. Ow. Woo, that's hot. Okay, so I want to finish up shooting some steel. This is a really big piece of steel that is going to be used for another video at another time, but we're going to go ahead and use it today. This is a quarter of an inch thick mild steel. I'm back at 30 yards and I had that piece of steel set up at a slight angle. So if we were to have a ricochet, it's going to go that way, but I highly doubt that it's going to ricochet. And this time I'm going to be using the Nosler 500 grain brass solid. Wow. Yeah. That punch right through that steel. You know what's the worst thing ever? When you forget to hit record on your camera. Anyways, we definitely made it through the steel. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That went right through that. So now let's step it up a notch. That was a quarter. This is three eighths. Let's hit record this time. Again, that piece of steel is at a slight angle to the right and pointing down. So if we were to have a ricochet, it's gonna go that way and into the dirt, not back at me. I'm using the 500 grain brass round again, and we're back at 30 yards. Wow, I am pretty sure that that made it through that piece of steel. And if it did, I'm gonna be really impressed. Okay. Oh, wow, I can already see the round. There's a piece of it right there on the cinder block. And we made it through 3 8 inch mild steel. That is uh, really impressive. <laughs> and there's a piece of the round here on the cinder block. Ow! Yeah, that's really hot. That's really hot. Jeez, look at that. Well, that's it for today's video. I had a ton of fun. This rifle was everything I thought it would be and then some. And I think I'm gonna have a few more videos coming your way with the elephant rifle. Is there anything else you would like to see me shoot with it? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video as much as I did, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also make sure you check me out on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below. And while you're at it, check out Kentucky Ballistics Clothing. Again, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. And I'll see you next time.